topic of our lesson today is the five minute reversal. And before I'm going to talk about a five minute reversal, I'm going to show you a one minute uh, trading idea that I had today. And that was Roku. Now, let me first, before I go through Roku, through the explanation of the Roku trade, I want to start a quick poll here. I want to ask you a question. Um, and here's the question. Um, who took Roku today with me? I would like to know. Just click on the yes. And then I'll see. Um, so we can, you know, I want to examine it not only from my point of view, but uh, specifically from the point of view of some of you who took the Roku trade with me today. So I would like to know. So it looks like we've got like 23%, uh, 5 of you guys took Roku with me because I see that uh, it, I don't have most of the answers now only 50% of you click the button come on guys participate did you or didn't you take uh, the Roku trade with me I already have seven okay okay so good let's stop it right here and looks like we have seven of you that took the Roku trade with me now that was a roller coaster right Okay, <laughs> let's talk a bit about uh, Roku and then I want to talk about um, the five minute reversal rule, which I think is something that uh, need, uh, need me to go more into details. So first, let's take a look at uh, Roku. Uh, Roku is, is a stock that we all love to trade and we usually love to trade it because it's, it's a big mover. It's going quite well when it decides upon a direction. It usually continues, continues. So we, uh, I would, I would easily say, I would uh, definitely say that uh, Roku um, is a good stock to trade. Although it was not a good trade today. I mean, I lost money on Roku today. Here's how my account looked like today. As you can see, I lost um, like two grand in Roku today. But that was nothing to the loss that I could have and depending on the way that I behaved and I think that although I lost money in Roku today I managed it correctly and I won't talk about this trade management in Roku and specifically about what I mentioned earlier the five minute reversal rule so again let's take a look at Roku why did I want to move today long Roku why did I want to why did I post it in the room uh, that I want to go Roku over 63, I believe, dollars. So $63 at that point, I think it looked fantastic. I mean, the stock started with a gap up, moved up, pulled back down, uh, reversed here, looked great for a long over $63. Uh, that was only the fourth minute candle. And we all know that when we trade the stock uh, in the first few minutes, it's very volatile, it's very dangerous. And we need to um, be aware of that. Be aware of that. So I took Roku and uh, seven of you guys uh, joined me today. And Roku really did well, although it happened too quick. And at the point that it almost did not reach my target because I had uh, an original 50 cents target. I didn't, it didn't really get there. It was very, very close. I mean, the highs was 49 so it was really just one cent away from my target but that happened too quick and I was at the same time involved with another uh, stock that I was uh, looking at I can't remember if I bought or short or did I at all and so I didn't really get the partial in Roku and it spiked up it was very quick and then it came down and then it came to the point where I should have moved out and my exit point my planned exit point, as I always trade, is a one-to-one -one risk reward, shouldn't have been less than 63. So I moved over 63, target of 50 cents, and then I should have, I mean, the max stop loss would be uh, 62 and a half. So that's where I should exit the trade, and uh, I did not. The reason I did not is because when I was watching the stock as it comes down, I, I saw that it really spiked down the same way it spiked up and it didn't give me really a chance to move in. It also spiked down and continued to go down almost without a pullback. I mean, these are one minute candles and it came down and continued down. There was a small pullback here, but it continued down. I could argue that I could have a stop here. 
162 after this small pullback but it really did continue down and I did not move out and I was waiting for it uh, to come um, all the way down and mentioned in the room that I was looking for a five minute reversal. Now if I will go to a five minute chart you will see the difference. The difference is very very clear. This is as you see here the point where I entered and it spiked up and it came down really quick and it continued to come down but look at this five minute candle it also was very red all the way down to here and then at the same candle it moved up and reversed so really you can argue that the only thing the stock did is try to move higher failed came down closed the gap continued a little bit more than that reversed at the point of closing the gap and a little bit below that and then moved back up so the question is, did the stock do anything wrong? You always have to ask yourself this question. Well, according to five minute candle, it hasn't done anything wrong. Yes, I try to make money on uh, the way that one minute candles looked. So I try to go long here. I Maybe I wasn't wrong, but I didn't get a chance to be right. And then it came down. So again, the question is when you should move out. Now, let me just say this. The five minute reversal stop is something that requires nerves of steel. And it also requires you to have the right quantity. And it also requires you to be able to go through the hardships of the stock going much against you, much more than you uh, anticipated and keep on coming down with this. It also requires you to use a mental stop loss, not a hard stop loss. And we talked about mental stop versus hard stop so many times in the past. I mean, you shouldn't have hard stops. And again, that may change if you're just beginning. So if you're just beginning as a trader, I, in fact, I suggest that you should use hard stops and you shouldn't use five minutes uh, reversals because five minute reversals are usually very very hard to implement if you're just starting out but I can implement it and I believe that it's the right thing to do and I believe that the only true reversal really is a five minute reversal yes I do try to use one minute reversal depending on the trade that I take sometimes but if I can't use one minute reversal especially when the stock is spiking against me very quickly because if it's not spiking against me very quickly just gradually coming down I have plenty of time to use a stop where I believe is the stop should be but when I don't look at the one minute candles here it just came down so quickly didn't really give me a chance to move out and then when it was all the way down I had really no choice but to go back to the five minute uh, reversal and the five minute reversal is the right one but not all the time when the stock is spiking against you it is the right thing because when the stock is spiking against you that's really usually not more than just noise so what is noise in day trading what is noise in stock first you need to understand that the people who are against you let's call it this way on the other side are usually not day traders like you they don't respect one minute candles sometimes they respect five minute candles most of the time they respect nothing the daily chart most people who are on the other side are investors are sort of Warren Buffett's are funds that are buying for stocks and holding them for years do they really care that you had a stop loss under 6250 who gives I won't I won't say what to the fact that you had a stop under 6250 nobody cares about your stop the people who are who you're trading against are the people who just decided they want to sell a few thousand shares maybe a few tens of thousands of shares it's in a company like Roku they're usually handling a lot of size so the thing is nobody cares about your stop loss nobody cares about the way the chart looks I mean some do many don't those who do you can use according to the five minute candle I mean that would help you but that is also not a, a, a very clear stop loss that will always save you now was that right 
I mean, did I, could I use the five minute candle when I started out as a trader? No, I would run away from a stock that looks like this, like a rabbit, like a frightened rabbit. Today, not. Today, I would wait for a five minute reversal if it spikes against me. I would wait for a five minute reversal as I did in Roku. Now, there's an added part to this because Roku came down too much. I will explain what I mean uh, um, by too much. So again, well, I, I know the first thing that people usually say when they see a chart like that is, okay, so where's your stop loss? Who says I should have a stop loss? The five minutes reversal is my stop loss. The stock can come down a few points and then you say, well, I could wipe up my account. Yes, you can. Would that happen if you had the right size? No, it won't. So think about if you had 400 shares and I had 4,000. Okay. Think about what will happen if you have 400 shares and it comes down 50 cents. You're down $200. $1 come down $400. Maybe you can't afford that. And that's fine. But what happened if you had just 100 shares? Can you afford this $1.5 drop under your stop loss? With just 100 shares? If you can't, how about 50 shares? The thing is, you need to trade the number of shares, the amount of shares that you can handle. You don't need to trade an amount, you don't, you're not supposed to be trading the, the number of shares that will uh, uh, excite you or, 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 or make you rich or whatever. You need to trade the number of shares that you can handle. And to handle the number of shares correctly, you should be able to stand a five minute reversal. And again, I know I'm talking to those of you who are not novice traders, because if you are, then you probably can't do that. But even if you can't, and you don't have the nerves of steel to do that, wait for the five minute reversal, which you should, then I'm right now teaching you something that you will have to handle in the future. So maybe you can't handle it now. Maybe you're just starting out and you should use hard stops because it makes you feel better and it makes you feel more secure. And that's what you should do because at that point of your trading career, it will help you. But I'm so, so excuse me if you're just a novice, novice traders. But I'm teaching you this in order to explain why at some point you should start moving to mental stops, uh, stop using hard stops, and respect the five minute reversal. And again, the five minute reversal is, is what really important because that's the real reversal. Does it always help you? No, it does not always help you. Do you always have to respect the one-to-one -one risk reward? I was looking for 50 cents. I almost had them and it happened too quick, so I couldn't really. And that's also a risk. And then I had a 50 cent stop loss. So should I always respect it exactly as it is? No. Most of the time I try to respect my one-to-one -one risk reward. But sometimes I'm trying to get much more out of my trade. Uh, I can't remember which one was it today. Was it Lulu, which was a great trade or anything else or something else. I can't really remember, but usually on a regular trading, trading day, you will see me looking for a target, let's say 30, 40, 50 cents, and then getting $1. So that means I respected the 50 cent target. No, I was looking for more than that if I can get that. So I was looking to get more. Sometimes I would get another 50 cents or another dollar more than I expected because it just continued moving and I managed my trade correctly. Does that also mean that sometimes you need to go through another 50 cent of stop loss or another $1 or $1.50 like in Roku today? Absolutely yes. So respecting the one-to-one -one risk reward or more than one-to-one, -one, my risk reward is one-to-one, -one, yours may be one-to-two. We talked about this uh, in the Star Trader course several times. So if you're doing the Star Trader course, I'm, I'm not going through this once more now. But the one-to-one -one does not ask you, or whatever your risk reward is, it does not ask you to completely obey blindly to the one-to-one -one risk reward or whatever risk reward you're using. You shouldn't obey to your stop loss sometimes. That's why you shouldn't use hard stops. 
and you shouldn't obey to the one-to-one -one target stop loss sometimes at the beginning of your trading career as i said earlier absolutely yes down the road no so why really did the stock come down well it came down for several reasons because mostly because most of the people out there are people who are not traders they're investors they was just selling more who was that how many were there how much did they sell I have absolutely no idea. Really, I don't know how much they sold and I don't know, uh, hold on a second, and I don't know uh, why they stopped selling it right over here. But that's the reason five minute reversal really worked correctly. So this could only be considered noise. Now, what is noise in day trading is the ones who are actually uh, selling um, or buying more than you expect them to do. They don't respect your, the, the, they don't respect support or resistance. They don't respect, uh, um, they don't respect uh, the point where the gap was closed. They don't respect anything because they don't sometimes look at the chart. So the only thing you can survive them, and that's not, uh, that will not happen 100% of the time, but the only way you can survive them is look for a five minute reversal. So, it's not that somebody was trying to shake you out, or which could also be possible, but not likely with a stock like Roku because it's it has very, uh, very high volume right now. It's over seven million shares. Uh, it's just that somebody who's uh, trading for the long range, or somebody who's uh, accumulating or selling uh, Roku, just decided to sell a little bit more. That's it. They don't sometimes even look at the charts. So again, if you look at five at one minute candles, it came down. If you look at five minute candles, and sometimes you should look at 15 minute candle, really, it hasn't done anything wrong. It started up, came down, closed the gap, as stocks should do. That's one of the things we also learn, of course, in the Star Trader course, and you all know that. And then just moved up. That's it. That's the only thing I can say. It hasn't done anything wrong. Now, in my opinion, when the stock is coming down, now I'm going to the phase um, two, and I will answer your questions uh, soon. Oh, you know what? Let's let me stop here, and um, and answer your questions till now, and then I'll go to phase two, which is uh, really uh, loss management. So let me talk about that real soon. But I'll try and answer your question. Uh, what about uh, existing? What about existing under the two breakout one minute candles to avoid massive psychology issue? Because it was okay. Nobody cares about uh, your stop loss, Henry. Nobody cares about my stop loss. Nobody cares about one minute candles specifically. One minute candles can alert you, can give you some trade ideas, can help you maybe scalp into a trade and move out from a trade, uh, uh, and can help you make decisions, which I use in the first few minutes when I trade. But nobody really cares about the one minute candles. Five minute candles is what counts. And why? Because institutional traders are only using five minute candles. They don't use one. I'm getting some extra information by watching one, but I'm always moving to five to take a look at the five minute candles too, because they are more important. Because institutional traders, if they look at the charts, they are looking at five minute candles. And therefore, one minute candles, they don't really care about much that, about that. Uh, small in this case, okay. So you probably asked your questions. Um, what do you mean about the five minute reversal? Okay, the five minute reversal, Sarko, is what you're seeing here. Now, look at that. Uh, if you're looking at one minute reversals, at one minute reversal, so technically speaking, it came down, 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 down. This could be theoretically considered a one minute reversal. So you have a green candle here. But in order for this candle to be a one minute reversal, you need the, the, the following candle, the red candle, to move over the high of this candle. So if the following candle would have moved over the high of this candle, okay, right over here, which it did not, as you can see, it continued down, this could be considered a one minute reversal. So again, a green candle here and the candle that moves above it could be a five a one minute reversal and if you take a look at what happened here then you you do have a one minute reversal right over here so you have this red candle uh, at a new low 
and the green candle comes above the red candle. So you do have finally a one minute reversal over here. Now let's take a look at five minute reversal. Five minute reversal would be much more clear in this case because as you can see it came down. Here's the reversal candle, a long bottoming tail and that would be the point where it finally started moving up. So you could get a clue by watching the one minute candles but the five minute candle would look uh, uh, much more clear than the one minute candle. What about strategies like Amir uses if the stock moves uh, for your duration and then comes back to entry with yourself? Um, good point, Philip. You know, every trader has a different strategies and Amir has his own. And uh, certainly you can use some of his, some of mine. Uh, they don't always come in together. Some traders have different strategies and you can definitely use different strategies. They don't contradict each other because again, every trader has his own way of trading and you do see me too reduce my size sometimes. So that if that helps you, you can do that. It's like having a stop loss at that point, only that you reduce half. In my opinion, the way I trade, I go all the way down and wait for a five minute reversal if it spikes. But again, that is very personal and this may be different from one trader to another. How does relative view affect that? I don't know. I don't use the ATL, Todd. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, phase two of, of what I wanted to discuss. Phase two of what I wanted to discuss is really the fact that Woku came down, to my opinion, to the point of very likely no return, although it did not. So you see, it came down very strong with a lot of downside momentum and that happened with a lot of volume. And then it reversed here and moved higher. It actually finished very high today, still going. So Woku came up very, very strong. And at that point where it finally had not the one minute reversal, although this is also a one minute reversal, but the five minute reversal, which is around this area, I didn't really thought it was likely to continue higher. Of course, you can uh, definitely look at uh, the result and I was wrong because it did continue higher. So for whatever reason, and of course nobody tells me that he wants to buy hundreds of thousands or millions of shares of Rocco and uh, drive it higher. I have no access to this information. Based on the chart and based on the chart would usually more than 50% of the time I wouldn't be wrong. I would be right. And I didn't think I was managing Roku in the wrong way. Let me be very clear about that. I did not think I was managing Roku in the wrong way. And I still think I managed it correctly, although it moved higher. So at that point, once it came down, and pulled back up. First, I was looking for the reversal in order to determine where my stop loss would be. Second, I wasn't looking for a winner, although it could have been. I wasn't looking for a winner. I was looking at the point where I could move out with minimum loss. So at that point, it was no longer risk management. It was loss management. And this is two different issues. If you read my books, I referred to risk management as a pilot was checking his airplane before the flight to make sure that everything is okay. And um, then uh, when sometimes you crash land and certainly that was crash landing, you manage your risk according to the crash land. I mean, you're trying to eliminate uh, death or you're trying to land your airplane in the best way. Right, Cesare? I mean, I know you're with us and he's the only pilot here. So, <laughs> did you ever crash land? <laughs> um, so, crash landing is really uh, the closest, uh, the closest uh, thing I could say uh, to loss management. So, really, crash landing is what I was doing here. I was crash landing. And I needed to use loss management technique. And what is a loss management technique? And that's the last issue I want to discuss today. A loss management technique is making sure you're losing the minimum possible 
amount of money. So in order for that to, um, in order to understand this, I would like to play this game. Okay, here's the game. Let's assume we don't see what comes next. Okay, let's assume we don't see what comes next. Well, the only thing we see, and of course at that point uh, we knew it was only coming down. So it came down that much and pulled back up a little bit. And now I know that I have a small reversal. So, okay, finally, it's reversing. What should I do? What I do is the following. I'll take you to the whiteboard now. What I do is the following. I'm looking at the stock that I was trading. It doesn't matter when, my, where my entry was. And it looks like that. And finally, it starts reversing. Okay, so that's what I have to work with. This is what I have to work with. That, that's, that's the only thing I have to work with. I'm seeing a stock that, uh, uh, that came down. I'm seeing the first reversal and I'm saying, oh my God, finally it uh, managed to reverse. So now I, I, I know where the five minute reversal is. And again, you can take a look at five minute candles and you can see the same. But I'm still watching it according to one minute candles because again, in the first 10, 20 minutes, even 30 minutes, I think I can get more information according to that. So I'm watching it in one minute candles and I'm trying to imagine a failure because I don't expect it to return to the highs, although Roku did that. I'm trying to imagine how would a continuation of a downtrend would look. So I would say it would probably look like this. And then maybe another pullback or whatever, I don't care. So I'm just trying to imagine a stock that is coming down. And as you've seen, has a lot of downside momentum pulling back up. And I'm asking myself, what would be the reasonable pullback. I no longer expect it to return to the point where I bought it. No longer expect it. I only trying to, I'm only trying to avoid this absolutely unpleasant loss. And I'm asking myself, what would be the point, a reasonable point of a pullback? Because you know, stocks don't move just in a straight line down. They move down and they pull back. When would it pull back? No idea but you need to survive it. Why do you need to survive it? Because that's the way that the market behaves according to five minutes reversal candles. And that is the point, that is really the, the right technical point to, uh, to understand where you have uh, the support and where the, the stock will um, most likely reverse. But again, don't trust it to return to the highs. Just trying to uh, try to avoid this absolute unpleasant loss. What would have happened if the stock would have stopped right over here and reversed from here? Well, then if it would have came down just a bit under my entry, even though it would have moved under my planned stop loss, which could possibly be here, then possibly I would let it move back to green territory and hope for good. But the stock came down too much. And not only that it came down too much, and this is, of course, I, I don't have a rule. What does it mean came too much? Just look at the chart. It looks terrible. It came down too much with too much volume. So it came down. It looks like it's coming down dramatically. It looked like it's coming down with a lot of volume. It, could, it looked like it's going to continue. So I'm painting in my head this chart and I'm trying to figure out what would be the point where I would like to move out of the stock. Of course, I wouldn't like to move at this terrible point here, right over here. But I was thinking that somewhere around here, and I mentioned today in the, in the trading room that that would be 62.50. Let's go back to the chart. I believe that was 62.50. At that point, right over here, I think that would be good enough for me. I mean, that would be the point where I'm trying to crash land and survive. I'm not trying to, 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 to the airplane. I'm, I'm not trying to, to, uh, 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 to make the airplane survive the, the crash. I'm not trying to save the airplane. I'm trying to save my life or maybe the passengers, whatever. So that's, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I will get, I will get hurt. I will, I, I, I will not, I will not totally, you know, come out without a scratch, but I definitely try, I'm definitely just trying to survive it. That's it. So let's go back to Roku. Now, 
as I mentioned, I was looking at Rocco, looking at this pullback, imagining the stock continue to come down after a pullback and thinking that a good area would be somewhere around here, 62.50. And you can see that there were some topping tails here, exactly the 62.50. Once I was here and started to see the topping tails, I believe it was a bit under 62.50, I moved out. I moved out. So end game, I moved in over 63, took approximately a 60 cent or I believe it was 50 something cent uh, loss, which could have been much worse, which could have been much worse, and really came back to the point where originally I should have been out. So originally I shouldn't have more than a 50 cent uh, move here which is my original one-to-one -one risk reward. And if it did come down, I should, I, I should hold to it. Do not move out, not, don't, in this case, I should not respect my planned stop. I should wait for a reversal. The reversal could came 10 cent lower. I couldn't know it wouldn't be there. If you do these trades long enough, I mean, if you take 100, the next 100 trades like this, it's most likely won't get there. And if it does get there and comes under, it wouldn't continue another one and a half point all the way down to here. It would probably most likely stop here or maybe stop at the point where the gap is closed. Somewhere around here, bounce and may bring you back to green territory. May bring you back to green territory. So from here to here, I had no idea where it's going to stop, but most likely closer to here. No, in this case, it did not stop close to here. It continued down and I was very, very unpleasant with this, unhappy with this trade. But still, I have to respect the rules and wait for it. But look what happened. I finally got the exact stop loss I should have had here. So although I was hoping it to bounce here and maybe finish in green, which could have happened, I still had the original stop loss I was looking at just because I respected the rules. Could it have continued even further? Absolutely yes. I would still do the same. Why? Because if I would do the next 100 trades like that, the next 100 trades like that, my average would be that I would be gaining a lot of money. If I wouldn't respect this rule, the end result after 100 trades would be I would lose much more money. And I can only tell you that because I've been trading for more than 19 years now. Otherwise, when I just started out, I would run away from a trade like that for like a frightened rabbit. So yes, I would have a stop at 62.50, like a frightened rabbit. I would click here or I would have a hard stop, but I got the same. So actually I got the same, not only that I got the same, the same result, like being a novice trader, I also, I also had the chance that it will stop somewhere over here and move back to my entry point and even farther. So I had the chance to succeed. It did not work out. Although I maybe could have looked for a little bit more based on what happened, but I couldn't trust that move. I certainly couldn't trust that move. There was no way of uh, understanding that Roku would actually do something like that. It was pure gambling. I did not gamble. I was waiting for a pullback, looking for the point where I thought it's probably going to come back down, trying to reduce my loss, and again, loss management, no, not risk management at that point, getting the same result as if I had my stop loss here, the one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, giving it a chance to move slightly lower and bouncing, which it did not, but in the next 100 trades, I promise you more than 50%, much more than 50%, would stop somewhere around here and bounce, and then respect a stop loss, respect a pullback. Now another issue, what would have happened if according to one minute candles, it would have come down to 62.50 slowly, not as quick as it did, just slowly, gradually coming down, maybe over here, bouncing a bit, coming down again under 62.50. Yeah, I would have a stop at 62.50, but it didn't really give me a chance. So it spiked down, it continued down, and then I'm left with the rules. That's it, I'm now left with the rule. I'm left with a five minute reversal rule, and I have to respect this rule because it's most likely to stop right over here, and it did not. It continued down, and then it came up. 
So end result, I lost exactly like my planned, original plan, stop loss. Could, have, could it have been worse? Absolutely yes. Very rare though. Very, very rare though. So if you have the right risk management and you have the right loss management technique, you shouldn't be losing money. You should be doing the best, which according to each scenario, of course, there's not all scenarios are the same. Some are looking, some stocks are behaving in a different way. You need to remember, and I'm just summarizing what we learned today. And, and you need to remember that noise in stocks, it has that is something that has nothing to do with you. Nobody respects your stop loss. Nobody cares about your stop loss. Most of the people out there are investors, long-term investors. They may sell thousands of shares. They don't care about the charts sometime. And that's it. So respect the rules. And I gave you something again here, which is a little bit advanced. And it has to do with your quantity. It has to do without with you not having uh, stop loss in the system, but having a mental stop. It has to, to do with you understanding the prospects of making money for the long term, not in a specific trade. Therefore, you need to be able to lose maybe more than you're uh, willing to lose sometimes or reduce your size. Therefore, again, I'm talking about people who can trade with enough money in their account, um, have the experience, uh, not frightened, too frightened, like, uh, again, novice traders maybe, and understanding what they should do, and again, in the long term. And again, if you're just starting out, maybe that was a little bit too advanced for you. But that would help you sometime down the road to understand what you're supposed to be doing. So I rest my case. Um, any questions that came since then, or if you still have uh, questions, or if I missed any of your questions, I will be happy if you just copy them and post them again. So I, I will know that I, that I will know that I missed them. So if you do have Ryan, did I answer your request on these sessions? It's going to be five minute market reversal, like the 30 minute market reversal you always talk about. I do notice five minute market reversals like what happened to Roku at open. The 30 minute market reversal is totally different, Ryan, right? I mean, this is uh, the thing that usually happen on Monday morning, uh, which also has to do with institutional selling and buying. But we're now talking about a specific stock with five minutes and that is correct anytime, not just on specific days. So I, 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 I asked earlier who took Roku with me. I had a poll of uh, and those of you who answered. Uh, there were seven of you guys who said that uh, they took Roku with me. And now I have a question only to the people who took Roku with me. And the question is, did you actually survive the reversal with me? So just those of you who said earlier that they took the trade with me, I want to know who of you actually managed to survive this with me. <laughs> I see there's more people who took this trade with me because earlier we had only seven, now we have 10. And five of you saying that you survived it with me. Uh, we now have 11, six of you saying you did not survive this reversal with me. Now in this particular case, those who did not survive the reversal with me, I'm not sure you had a worse trade than I did. Actually, you could have had a better trade. So those of you who just said no, 54% of you, 6 of 11 of you, could have had a better exit than I did. That's one. But tell you what, at least I had the chance to be better than you. I think I probably had the same exit as you did on average. Let's call it that way. Somewhere around 60 uh, to 50. Okay. So I think the minimum is, I mean, on average, let's say the average of you guys, I probably had the same exit as you did, but my added benefit was I had the chance. For example, I had the chance, hold on. I had the chance that maybe at the 60 to 50, I wasn't quick to take my, to move out of the trade here. 
I was hoping that it's going to do this, which did not. You see these topping tails here. But sometimes I would take it to the 6250, look for the first sign of a pullback to, to, to run out of this trade because now my lost manager, management is, 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 is kicking in and I'm supposed to be getting out because I'm expecting it now to move uh, lower again. Uh, but sometimes what really happens is that it continues higher and very quickly and I'm, I, I had the chance to survive this trade without a loss. You didn't. So that was my, my extra advantage which was not used in this case but could have easily come to the point where I would use it. So you know sometimes in our trading session I'm asking uh, traders if they survive the trade with me um, and in many times this question comes at the point where I'm green. So I'm actually having a green trade. I don't think that was very likely with Roku, although <laughs> and the result he did move up. So the thing is, I'm when I'm surviving a trade like this, most of the time I will get greener than the people who did not survive it with me or lose less. And that's what I'm trying to point at. So those of you who survived this with me probably got the same stop loss as I did. Those of you who did not, or, or better, those of you who did not survive with me, you didn't have the chance to get green. I had the chance, although it didn't work, didn't work out. So I, I, I wish that would have looked different so that I would say, wow, look at this. I just gained another thousand dollars and so and But that was not the case, of course, in this case. So you see, uh, you can't panic, you can't just escape, you need to keep the rules. Maybe your quantity was too much, maybe uh, you're panicking because you're just new, maybe you're using hard stop which you shouldn't and so on. And yes, it does happen, uh, it does happen very, very rarely. Um, I have a question here, last question I think from Philip. What if it stores at 62 um, a few minutes and then moves down? No, if I have if I don't have a five minute reversal at uh, let's say 62 or okay, if I do have the reversal at 62, okay, now I got you. So if I do have the reversal, let's say this the reversal is at 62 here and then it's stalled and then crashes down, then yes, I would should respect this five minute reversal and move out. Yes, I should. I mean, once it shows me that it's really, really, really trying to move back up and only then coming under this law, I would definitely take this loss. But that would be very, very rare, very extremely rare. Will it happen in the next 100 trades? Of course it will happen. And yes, I will move out even without taking the 6250. Absolutely, this could happen. But tell you what, the next 100 trades I will do, 95 of them I would move out on a better, uh, in better terms. 5% of them I would be stopped here, maybe even less than 5%, I don't know. So in the next 100 trades, if it's so overwhelming, over 60%, over 50%, even if it was 51%, you should wait. But it's much better than that. So since it is much better than that, you should wait. You bought uh, the breakout and got shaken out of the lowest point. Five minutes. Here's the five minute candles. So if you're watching five minute candles, there's no reason to move out, right? There's no reversal here. Okay, guys, I'm not going to get in more into details and the reason is because um, it's nine o'clock in the evening here and I have a friend waiting in the nearest bar. <laughs> so, I'm going to have a drink now. Um, well, thank you very much for being here with me today. Uh, it was a pleasure, as always. Uh, thank you for being in this mentor mentorship session and i um, looking forward to our next one and of course trading with you guys tomorrow so thank you very much for being here with me and i really hope it was uh, of some benefit to you guys and um, i'll see you all tomorrow in trading room and try you know try to implement that and even if it's too advanced for you you should know that you will be there in the future you should 
look forward to be there, being able to manage this trade correctly. And um, again, maybe that's not very helpful right now, but will be in the future. I'm sure it will be. So just keep on getting, trying to get to that point. So again, thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Bye traders. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to take Traders' free welcome course. It was designed to teach you the basics of Wall Street trading. Click here to sign up for this no risk, no cost offer. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.